a feminist take on true crime like wh what did you see what that that's what you said right the, the yeah the, yeah i mean because to me i have a lot of friends that love true crime right and and i i can see the appeal but sometimes i feel there's a portrayal of often female victims that's just it's it's a little it, it doesn't yeah. speak to me i mean what did you see in terms of like your spin on how how you wanted to to do this based on the the wealth of like true crime podcasts and shows that that you could see so a lot of it the difference uh, there are a lot of things that i uh set out to do differently we don't show gruesome crime scene photos I don't interview the serial killers in a couple episodes. I don't even name them. It's less about the actual case and more about the larger systemic injustice. Um, and it's crazy that we've been you know, consuming true crime and there's so much of it for decades. And, and also so much of it is just not really told from that perspective. You know, like it's not about the guy who kills a woman. It's about the parole system that allowed the guy to get out mm -hmm. early and kill the woman because he had many, many charges of um, sexual assault, but because we don't take sexual violence against women seriously, these guys are really good at evading justice, serial offenders. Um, but it's also at the same time, I'm not like trying to be Nancy Grace or like pro mass incarceration. So it's like a measured approach. Um, the best way I can describe it, if I could make it like the dream version of a show, I would say it would be like, Daily Show Meets Dateline, where it's like less about the crimes, but you're using crimes to bring in people who are like true crime junkies. And then you're just kind of zooming out and talking about like, why does this keep happening? What are things that we can do to stop it from happening? I love that. And part of it is too, it's like a business, I think is, is your argument, right? That, 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 yeah. that this is- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, explain is, well, I mean, one of the jokes that I said in the Conan set that got their attention, I was like, um, True crime has become America's leading export in late stage capitalism. The joke being like all the manufacturing jobs are going overseas, but dead women are the one thing we still make in America. <laughs> um, and then I'm like making a show. I'm part of the problem. So I'm just like trying to. And, and it also happened like during COVID. They approached me right before COVID. And I was like, I don't know. And then like six months of shows got canceled. And I was like, hey, I'm in. <laughs> like, um, but well, I think. Very yeah uh, i but appreciate it, the honesty i mean but no but the the cool thing is i do think we kind of landed at a place where episode two we get into this thing that i've been wanting to like tackle for a long time i i shouldn't say like violent words when i talk about violence but um it's our culture um but consent offenses which if you're unfamiliar they are like i choked her during sex and she died accidentally and they're, or they're also called the rough sex defense and they've been outlawed in the UK, but they exist here and they don't normally get killers off. I know that's also a pun, but they do contribute to reduce sentences. Um, and that's something that we talk about in episode two. There was this horrifying case that made the rounds in media because like the punchline or the, the headline was so salacious. It was like, man thought woman choked on his dick. And so he, like stayed with her body for three days and like didn't call the ambulance and then got a defense attorney and he is now free in Florida. And so when we approached this story, we talked to the victim's granddaughter. We, we like, it was, it was very hard to navigate because the punchline or sorry, because the headline seems like a punchline, but you know, we didn't, we, we really made it like an indictment of the justice system that like when, like the reality is there probably was no sex act involved. It was just a, creative defense in a state like Florida, where you could convince the jury that this happened because people do doubt women, particularly when it involves like a sex act or sex crime. Um, and, per and particularly, I would imagine women of color too. Like I, yeah. th is that, that's the victim's name was Francisca Martinez. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, women of color for sure. Like all women, I mean, these crimes are pretty common. There was a uh, the the most known case was a guy in New York in the eighties, Robert Chambers. Murder. I was just yep. going to ask you about that. Yes, that, yeah, because that was while I was in college. So the, I had contemporaries. I think I knew some guy who 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 testified at that trial. Wow, for for which side? <laughs> Not the good side. I don't know. I, I um, it was a guy named Chambers, I believe. Robert, uh, yeah, Robert Chambers was the killer. 
And, and the preppy murder or something mm-hmm. they called it. And he was supposedly, uh, you know, involved in sort of choking a, a woman in Central Park while yep. they were having sex. Jennifer, and- I'm blanking on her last name, yes. So he's free now, but he did serve 15 years. Um, but in our in our piece, we talked to a medical examiner who basically said there's really no way that you can choke someone to death accidentally. Like it takes a long time. And those are the kind of things that you get into. And just the idea that like in the UK, the rough sex defense has been outlawed because they as a society have decided like people do not consent to die during sex. It's just not a thing that happens. So stop using this as a defense of like an accidental death situation. That's interesting. Also, I, do, I, I do remember with that case that he said she started it. He said she wanted rough sex. and He said that she wanted. And then there was also some footage while he was out on, on, on bail where he was playing with a doll or something. I think early. Maybe I'm, I'm making this up, so I probably shouldn't even say it. But Fan that, fiction. That <laughs> there was um, something that he did that really you know, made it clear. Because this, when that happened... I mean, maybe I was just, you know, I was young. I was in college. I hadn't, I, I wasn't even aware of like, I had no, th- th- this, it was, it was presented as some type of like exotic, uh, you know, New York city, you know, uh, culture, you know, coming out of like studio 84. You culture, know, they're all sexual you know, deviants. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, even today, I think, I was talking to a comedian friend about it on her podcast and she's like, I like rough sex and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Every that's really has nothing to do with this legal defense. Like you can like rough sex and like being choked during sex, but that, that will not kill you. You know, it takes like five minutes of like, like it, it's, it's not a sex act gone wrong when people die this way. Um, and I think that that's like an important message because our culture, we are interested in like salacious sex acts and blah, blah, blah. But in this case, like the woman, there's, there was no evidence that a sex act even happened. But because the defense was able to get creative because, and because we live in a society that does doubt women, the defense worked. Um, yeah. This is not how I thought this interview was going to go. <laughs> well, this is, I'm sorry. We can talk about uh, Ukraine. 